when it came like summertime, especially like going back into high school or even middle school, and like you're going back to like to school in the fall, I still have like kind of like traumatized from like years ago. I still feel it, you know. I'm like, oh, it takes me like a good yeah. month to get into September. Like once I get yeah. to September, then I'm like, okay, I feel all right now. I can get through this, but like this August into September piece is yeah, always yeah, I agree with you. Me, you know, like, but it's always good because you, you know, the football part really, you do it by, by end of September or October. You start oh yeah. Yeah. October I'm back into it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It gets exciting by then, but it's just so, and then you get into the baseball playoffs and then hockey starts and basketball. So it's fun that way, but um, I hate to rush the summer. It's just, and then a preseason game like this, I could kill us. Well, we got a um, good guest on today. Um, the, t- the, today's guest is Lisa Finelli Fallon, who is the co-founder and CEO of Boston Cannabis Week. Um, just a little bit about BCW. Boston Cannabis Week launched in September 2019 as New England's first week of events geared towards cannabis professionals, consumers, and innovators with a focus on education, health, and wellness, art and music, networking, fashion, cuisine, and sports. We aim to create programming that is inclusive and comprehensive. Um, in addition, Lisa had some extensive background in um, working as a booking agent, talent buyer, brand and PR manager in the music industry with the likes of Method Man, Red Man, Lupe Fiasco, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Derek's favorite group, yeah. Onyx, Brian Can Make It Slam, to huh. name a few. It was great. The questions were awesome. But of course, I have a bone to pick with both of you. The trash talking on there was unbelievable. Yeah. I'm not there to defend myself when both of you are deciding to trash talk me sean gives me a rating of one and a half on my on my show my own show he's giving me a one and a half rating you know right now if he's listening to this he's gonna get that little giggle he's, he's oh, drinking on his little cocktail with the cigar and his you yeah. know smoking and like coughing yeah he, he thinks he's so funny one and a half and on my cocktail hour and then making comments about my big afro during high school and i did start giggling though when you i didn't you remember the uh the incident with the speaker falling on your head <laughs> did you remember that i did yeah you started talking about it and i started rolling i started oh, laughing before God. you did. i'm like he's gonna he's gonna write he remembers it yeah that was uh that was hilarious it was yeah it was a great episode and uh it was good yeah, to have yeah, though he didn't um he didn't jump in on the fact that um when you dump water on my head with the, you know coming back from papa genius that you also nailed him oh yeah this at is- the movie theater on the roof. I was going to get in. into it, but like, again, you go down all those, like you have so many stories. You're, you're, I'm surprised you're he didn't say nothing because he was the victim of the, yeah. of the water splash. <laughs> he probably, he was traumatized though. So he didn't want to hear about it. <laughs> um, Brian, you just recorded um, just for the listeners to know um, I, I participated in the background on it, but um, Brian's got um, his own little kind of episode coming out with um, B now business chats with B Naz. Um, you did that with a uh, past guest, past guest David Leonardo, and um, with Andy, another colleague of yours. So, look for that. Um, I don't know; it might be out by the time we do this, depending on when we release it. So, um, good stuff. You felt good on that, Brian? Yeah, man. Am I frozen? No, no, you're good. Yeah, you're good. You just broke. Um, yeah, but it was a really good episode. Uh, kind of like with what we have on on our show here, man. I feel like I learned a bunch of stuff, especially as I listen to it. Mm-hmm. Um, you learn different, you learn kind of different things and you're like, man, I should have asked this question, should have asked that question. But the plan is, is to work on, um, sort of a business oriented show, sort of a lot of what we do here, but maybe more of a focus on the very specific, uh, verticals within, within the business world. That one was on brand branding. I should say, um, brand loyalty and client loyalty. Um, I had some other ideas running around the business development. Um, our very Welcome first to the show, Lisa Finelli Fallon from Boston Cannabis Week. Um, Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome, you guys. <clears throat> it's a pleasure to have you on. We know that you're getting um, geared up for September for a big week there. So um, the fact that you set some time aside, much appreciated. Um, and we're also joined by Felicia, who also kind of works alongside you as well, correct? Yes, uh, Felicia's worked with us for a little while. She uh, she's the one we like to say that keeps the uh, train on the track, <laughs> tackle things, mm-hmm. um, and she's been a big supporter since day one of our events, um, which is so so wonderful to have the support of your friends. Um, yeah, so we launched Boston Cannabis Week in 2019. 
Uh, we started planning in 2016. My business partner and I, Scott Batano, uh, met back in 2016. At the time, I was the booking agent at uh, Hard Rock Boston. And I started doing shows with uh, Nappy Roots and uh, uh, Sky Zoo and a lot of 90s hip hop artists. And I did a show with Redman uh, mm -hmm. there. And this guy shows up to the the VIP event afterwards and he introduced himself he's, and he said, uh, I'm working with the Boston Freedom Rally. Do you think you can do this and book Method Man for the Freedom Rally in three months? And I was like, all right, sounds, sounds fair enough. So uh, we booked that year, 2016, we booked the talent for the Boston Freedom Rally. It was Method Man, Red Man for a free show on Boston Common. And then while that was going on, we kind of said, like, why is this just a few days? Why are we not doing a whole week? Why is everything jammed in? Mm -hmm. um, and that was literally how my, my, you know, Scott, my now business partner, Scott, said that to me. Um, and I was like, well, why don't we just do it? So we started planning it then. 2019, we launched uh, five events over the course of a week. And uh, education, health and wellness, art and music, networking, uh, and then we have a golf tournament on top of that. <clears throat> so last year, like everyone else, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out what to do, we right. did a full uh, virtual week of events and it went 10 times better than we ever thought it would because then we started reaching a more national audience. Right. And so going into 2021, the plan uh, has been to do hybrid programming. So we have mostly outdoor in-person events. And then virtual events happening the entire week, September 20th to the 26th. Uh, it's going to be about 16 events total between outdoor and person and virtual. Oh, that's huge. What's the purpose kind of included in that in like what you're doing? So <clears throat> I got into this, like most, most people have an interesting story about how they got into this. I kind of transitioned from uh, the ad agency business to the music business and then into the cannabis business. Um, it, it's, it's the kind of thing that everybody has a story about how it's affected their lives. I remember being very young and not understanding why it was okay for us to be taking like prescription medications, but we were looking at this plant, like it was an awful thing. So from a very early age, I had this understanding of like, this is something doesn't feel right like cigarettes are legal and alcohol is legal. Um, and I was a child that, you know, I had like a little bit of a traumatic childhood. So as I got older and discovered cannabis myself, it was like, oh, it doesn't have to like burn all the time. It's like, oh, this is cool. So, um, you know, I then started to understand and have a better understanding of how it helped people. And then uh, my business partner, Scott, will tells a story about how his, at a young age, his uncle was using it to treat uh, cancer while well, he had cancer and it was using for pain management. And he, it allowed his uncle to live in a way that was much better until he had a better quality of life till the end. So stories like this kind of formed like, why, why do we look at this in this way? But these other things that are really awful for us, um, you know, are totally fine. Uh, alcohol, cigarettes, even sugar. Sugar is one of the worst, <laughs> worst drugs out there. And yeah. it's, we just like, it's in our daily lives. So um, if we can bring a little bit of awareness to that and, you know, we're in Boston and this has become, you know, the hub for cannabis on the East coast. And, you know, we're hoping to be a part of that. You know, you know what I find interesting, and you kind of touched it on the end, touched about it on the end of what you were just talking about, was how dangerous some of the traditional foods are that we eat. You know, you mentioned sugar. Um, we had on a, we had on a nutritionist a couple, gosh, a couple months ago now, Sia McCarthy. And that was the one thing that she touched touched on was how what sugar does to you. And uh, I remember when I was with a working with a trainer a couple of years ago, he he said you walk down the aisle of any store. That food that they put that's most obvious in front of you is probably the worst stuff for you. So it's good. It is good to see how the industry that you're working in, there is a little, it is becoming a little more, I don't know, normalized is the appropriate word, but from where I sit, a novice, at least I, I sense that it is. I don't know about how you feel about it. Yeah. I, I think overall as a society, we're, we're definitely more mindful 
Um, people are paying attention to what they're putting into their bodies, to the type of materials they have in their homes. Um, you know, in my mind, it's like we spend our life putting all sorts of awful chemicals in our body and on our bodies and in the products we put on. And then we're surprised that our cancer rates are so high. So I truly feel like by eliminating some of those things that you can just live a healthier, happier life. And cannabis can be a part of that. CBD could be a part of that. It doesn't even need to be THC. There's such good properties, you know, without the THC. Um, but this is part of what we want to get out there and help people learn. And, you know, we find a lot of people re-entering the market, the kind of curious, we call them, are interested in what we're doing because we're trying to explain it and, and execute things in a really simple and absorbable way. Um, and, you know, you're finding people who have gone to their guy, you know, their whole lives and you know, are now in a place where, you know, they're seeing it just kind of become part of the everyday lives in a legal setting. It's, it's really interesting to see the transition happening right now. Going into this year, um, we felt like we had to amplify that even more so. So um, we've been kind of having an ongoing rollout. Right now, the uh, tickets for the golf sale, a uh, golf tournament are still available. Um, and the industry mixer networking event uh, and our fashion on fire event are all open for registration right now. Over the next week, we're going to be putting our uh, the rest of our tickets on sale and announcing our full lineup, which is so exciting. I can't wait to tell everybody like what we're going to do. So um, we have a, a golf tournament Monday. Uh, Monday morning, Mellow Monday is a DJ mixer, Monday evening, Fashion on Fire is a glass art and uh, fashion gallery, uh, Wednesday is education and cuisine, Thursday is our industry mixer, um, Friday is our block party, Saturday is our art music festival, and Sunday is health and wellness. So it's really like a packed week, and honestly, I have to just just take two seconds to thank all of our partners who are involved with that because we have a ton of people on board uh, from Apothotherapeutics to MCR Labs to Weed Maps to uh, Western Front to Coast Canico, Vantage Builders. Um, we're working with Leeds Edutainment. We have so many people involved in making this all happen right now. Um, and we're just so, so grateful for everybody's support. So, um, uh, that really is the reason this all works because all these people come in and help make all of those things happen. That's huge. And just the, the, the dates are September 20th to the 26th, correct? Yeah, September 20th to the 26th. You can go to bostoncanvasweek.com right now. Um, we have our first schedule up uh, as of tomorrow. The, the rest of the schedule goes up. Uh, and like I said, in the next, uh, uh, just early next week, we'll be announcing the full lineup of artists, uh, which is, I'm just super excited about. For health and wellness, we're working with Trillfit, uh, who is amazing. If, if you're not uh, hip to Trillfit, you should really check them out. Uh, and we're working with Ethan Zahn, who is gonna, who was on Survivor, is going to be doing kind of a running clinic kind of event. Uh, we're working with Dinner at Mary's on Cuisine, so she's amazing too. Um, and everything that Sam Cantor Events does. So Elevate Northeast has worked with us on education for several years since the beginning. So it's really just amazing to have all their support. And now, so what's happened is over the last year, we started doing the virtual events. Then we also uh, launched a whole creative and design agency. We started working with clients. Year one, our ticket links got taken down, our ads got taken down. It was a real like cluster trying to keep everything up and get tickets sold. So now we have a lot of those things ironed out. Um, and we've had to kind of, you know, we've worked with our clients and our sponsors to figure out how to do that for them. Before we knew it, we were working with a whole bunch of brands in the areas of packaging and signage and social media marketing and website development and brand development and all of these things. So we now have Boston Cannabis Week and we have our creative agency, BCW Beyond, which is working with clients both in and out of the cannabis space and, and all these kind of areas of, of marketing and branding and design. Uh, your, the, pro the production on these podcasts, on, on these, the video stuff, on the marketing and 
so for something like this, is this like a self-funded like company or is this things where you had to go out there, build a business plan and, and, and get that fund in there? Cause we drove like, you know, between my brother and myself and Brian, you know, like the 78 Bretsky productions, how do I start, you know, start that? And I've talked to Felicia, like we, we kind of joked about it a little bit, you know, how do you do that? But how do you employ that many people and actually get the funding for it? So honestly, my Scott and I joke, joke, we talk about this kind of frequently more lately, but we went into this with nothing, zero dollars. Like, you know, we, it, we had a concept. We knew that it would work. We created kind of a loose idea. We made a business plan. We worked on that business plan for maybe a year. We kind of kept formulating the concept and talking about it and talking about it. It was probably a year, one year before the first one. So 2018 that we were like, okay, this is happening. Full planning mode. Let's go. Um, and we literally have built it from the ground up. Starting with our, you know, our very first sponsor was MCR Labs. They were the first ones to listen to this and say, that's a good idea. And then when we actually were like, we're going to do this, they're like, okay, that's cool. Like, you know, and so... Um, we've had partners over the years that have stayed with us this year. I, I, you know, we're so blessed in that, you know, we're, we have more people wanting to work with us than we ever have before, which is such a beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, we didn't time machine or magic wand. Oof. Time machine. Instagram famous or infomercial famous? <laughs> Instagram famous. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Infomercial. <laughs> the hell would want to be an infomercial famous? <laughs> Crunchy peanut butter or smooth peanut butter? Smooth. Sort by price or by rating? Rating, always. Dazed and confused or Friday? Friday. The departed or the town? Because I love my boy Slane, the town. Yeah, so that he, he's from Boston, right? He's an yeah, actor. He's, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Biggie or Tupac? That's a hard one. I mean, Biggie off the rip, but I'll be lying if I said I didn't. I didn't love Pac because I do. Wu Tang or Mob Deep? Wu Tang. Lauren Hill or Little Kim? <laughs> uh, Lauren Hill. Nas or Eminem? Nas. Big Pun or Fat Joe? Ooh, this is tough. Uh, I feel like I feel like Chris would be upset me if I didn't say Big Pun. 